Welcome to Bobcats Weekly, the place for all the latest on your favorite Quinnipiac teams. I'm your host, Nolan Rich. QU women's basketball had a busy week with three games, including an appearance in the TD Bank Classic. But first, they would have to defend their home court versus another mid-major power. Women's basketball battling Temple, a battle of defenses in this one early on. Well, they Bobcats will swing this ball to Adele Thorne, and she hits the three. She had eight points in this one. Later on, it's Katie Carroll from behind the arc with the bucket and the swish. This would end up with a wild finish in this one. Bobcats with a two-point lead. Temple will throw it up. Their defense, though, would hold tough. Temple's going to kick it out for the three after this missed layup, trying for the desperation shot as time is winding down. Temple trying to get the win. No good as the Bobcats will hold on to this one. The buzzer sounds and the Bobcats walk out of the TD Bank Sports Arena with a 58-56 win. DePaul Town leads the Bobcats with 12 points, while Sarah Schuen leads Q with seven rebounds and three blocks. After an 8-66 loss to Georgetown, Bobcats finishing up the TD Bank Classic, Quinnipiac battling Vermont. I don't know about you, but give the ball to 22. Brittany Johnson with the layup for Quinnipiac. Then again, give her the rock with another bucket. She had 10 points. Later on, Brittany Martin, Swish City for the three. Then here's a head fake and a drive by Martucci. Whoop! Going in for the layup. Bobcats would end the weekend with a big road win, beating the Catamounts by the final score of 77 to 65. Maria Napolitano ties a career high in this game with 20 points. Well, Brittany Johnson has a career high day as well with 10 points. While the women's team picked up two big wins this week, the Quinnipiac men's basketball team hosted two home games of their own as they get into the heart of their season. First up would be NC Central. Bobcats looking for back-to-back -back home wins in the corner. It's Giovanni McLean pulling a little shake and fake right here as he pulls up for the three-pointer and finds nothing but net as this would be a good shot for him. Bobcats would go on a 22-2 run in the second half as the offense would be rolling as Abdullah Bundu drives inside for two. Quinnipiac dominating the paint and layer. It's Chase Daniels working hard down low for two points. Daniels with 16. Second straight game for Daniels where he leads the Bobcats in scoring. And then later on, he's going to show off the outside range right here showing that he can go outside the paint and do some work as the Bobcats would hold on to win this one by the final score, 69-59. Daniel Harris leading QU with 10 boards. Men's basketball hosting Albany in the second game of the week as Samuel Dingba, as you, what you can say, is bada bing, bada boom, baby, at the top of the key with six points in this one. They're on. It's Abdul Bundu showing how to dominate in the paint. This, kids, is how you dominate down low as he goes inside with the one-hander for the bucket. McLean would then later give it to Harris on the outside as he would pull up the head fake. Whoop! Go out to the outside and then the fadeaway jumper for the bucket. Bobcats would not be able to hold this one as Harris even with 19 points as the Bobcats would fall in the second half and would fail to capitalize on their first half lead as they fall to Albany in this one by the final score of 58 to 54 as Daniel Harris once again leads the Bobcats with 19 points. Coming up next on Bobcats Weekly, Alexa Farrell sits down in studio with one of the leaders for the women's basketball team. And later, men's ice hockey would look to remain undefeated while the women battled for in-state bragging rights. All this and much more next on Bobcats Weekly. Welcome back to the Bobcats Weekly Studio. I'm Nolan Rich. The Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team still has not lost a game this season. But if they wanted to keep their undefeated streak alive, they would have to deal with a weekend series against UMass. In the first game, Bobcats would score a huge road win over the Minutemen. By the final 4-1, Sam Annis with a goal and two assists, and Travis St. Dennis would also add two assists in the road win. Bobcats looking for the queen sleep as they brought it back to Connecticut. Michael Gartig looking to keep his recent hot streak and goal going. In the first period, Tim Clifton will pick this puck up in the corner, throws it to the front of the net, and it's deflected in by Scott Davidson for the goal. one to nothing, Bobcats. In the first period, then later in the second period, Travis St. Dennis with the breakaway. He's going to try for the goal, but he gets tripped up. Would lead to a penalty shot. He would not be able to get it. But then Gartig with a big save here. Loose puck and foot, but Bo Peeper. Kick save and a beauty. Doing his best goaltender impression there. As the Bobcats hold on to win this one by the final of one to nothing, keeping their undefeated season alive. Gartig ties the program record for wins with his 59th career win as he earns his fifth shutout this season. Quinnipiac women's ice hockey was looking for their third consecutive Nutmeg Classic title. Bobcats would head to Ingalls Rink for the tournament hosted by Yale University. Q looking for state bragging rights opening up against UConn in the first period. It would be Nicole Costa. She gets this puck on the top of the circle and blasts it into the back of the net for the goal. One to nothing Bobcats. And from there, it would be the Sydney Rossman show as Sydney Rossman coming up big 
with 16 saves in this one as she earns her third consecutive shutout as even though UConn pulls the goalie at the end, Bobcats would hold on for the one to nothing victory and would go to the Nutmeg Finals on Sunday against Yale as they take on their arch rivals. Picking up the action in the second period, Melissa Samuskevich will come along the boards and she will find TT Cian Farrell streaking down the middle of the ice. Cian Farrell driving the zone. She's going to pull up, fire and score her 15th of the season and she puts the Bobcats up one to nothing in this one. Later on in the third period, it would be a battle in the corners. Nicole Connery trying to push this one in the front of the net. She gives it to Cian Farrell. Puck is loose in front and it's Connery through the five hole with the goal. Bobcats up two to nothing. Yale would pull the goalie late. Trying to get back into this one, but the Bobcats would ice the game right here. Empty netter puts this away, and the Bobcats earn their third consecutive Nutmeg Classic title. TTC and Farrell earns the tournament MVP, while Sydney Rossman picks up her fourth consecutive shutout and the tournament's most valuable goaltender. This week's play of the week goes to Nicole Costa, who snipes the shot in from the top of the circle. Costa's goal would be the game winner against UConn, and she earns this week's play of the week. That's going to do it for this episode of Bobcats Weekly. This part of the show or want to watch it again? You can always watch us at QU Athletics on YouTube. And remember, Bobcat fans, you can follow your favorite Quinnipiac teams all season long on QuinnipiacBobcats.com. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nolan Rich, and we'll see you next time. Welcome to QNN. You're watching The Workshop. I'm Tyson Geig, joined here by Bethany Olson, and we are honored to have in <laughs> studio with us today Jim Basquell. Anchor with ESPN, Jim. Welcome. I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's good to spend some time with both of you. So, Jim, we're getting deep in the school year here. Yeah. A lot of kids are starting to apply for class or for for jobs yeah. across the nation. What would you suggest that they do? If there's one thing that you could suggest when looking for a job on air, what would it be? This sounds like a conversation you and I have had. I think so. <laughs> uh, a lot of things. I, I I think you have to really beat the bushes. Not only do you have to take advantage of any contacts that you have in the industry, because that goes such a long way. But also, you have to kind of introduce yourself to people and show them that you're willing to do a multitude of things. That might be work in production to work your way up. I was having a conversation tonight with some of the students about the fact that you never know where your path's gonna lead you. You can start out as a writer and ultimately be a producer, and that can translate to on air. It doesn't necessarily have to be on air right away, or you can be a producer. I know that Bethany has a lot of skills in terms of the production end of it. You can be a producer. There's so many different jobs in the industry now that can branch off into different jobs that you're not even envisioning right away. So I would say not only take advantage of all the contacts that you have, and in your case, United States, Canada, but also try to reach out to all the various teams and leagues to see if there's any opportunities and show them you're willing to work ground up, really. You mentioned networking, which I assume was important when you were entering the field. What do you think is the biggest difference between when you entered and when aspiring journalists are entering now? Uh, well, I'll say this from the network. I was terrible at it. I've been terrible at it my whole career in terms of networking. I, I, I should be better at it. But I'll say this. I'll say the, the, the refinement of the individuals, the, 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 the young talent coming out of school now is a lot better than it was when I was starting, like Tyson, I, I I've seen his work, and I you know he he's way ahead of where I was at my, that stage when I was in school, and so it's you're you're up against tougher competition now because everybody wants to be on air and sports radio or on TV. It's just it's blown up exponentially from when I first started to where you are now. So everyone wants the opportunity, and there are thousands of people going for the same jobs when there's only one or two jobs. So the competition level is so much stiffer, but the, the level of talent is so much higher. The stakes in the game are so much higher now than they ever were when I first started out. So I, I, I feel for the individuals that are coming out now because I know how tough it is right now. You can, it's hard to stand out, but I see how talented a lot of these individuals are, including you two, that I always encourage you, despite the long odds, to stick with it because you can find your way through the woods, in a sense. Jim, going off of that point, you're a guy who's had to pay your dues in the smaller markets before. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about that? Uh, it's, first of all, you know, you, you, when you go to the smaller markets, it's daunting because in my case, I started off uh, I, I, from New York, I worked at ESPN in production, so I really didn't have a, lo a large experience outside of my kind of environment in a sense. I went to school in New York, 
And I went, my first market I worked in, it was Albany, Georgia. It was like culture shock for me, but it was a great experience. It was fun. It was fun. I took, I really enjoyed being like the big fish in this tiny, tiny pond. And then you just kind of move your way up through the ranks. You learn so much in these small markets. It's, it's so important to start small and you don't have to be there long. You'd be there six months to a year and then move on to the next market. But the experiences you have along the way and the relationships you have, the, the, uh, the uh, contacts that you have that you see that move up into bigger and better things themselves is, is a great opportunity. So I, I wouldn't, I, you know, to me, that's the most important thing. Start small and work your way up in these markets and you have stories for a lifetime in them too. So when you started out, did you know what you wanted to do? in being an on-air personality? I did. I did. I, I, well, I knew I wanted to work in sports. And uh, I knew I had a knack for the mastery of the subject. You know, I knew that. Um, I didn't quite know if on-air opportunities would be there because there's so many uh, different venues now that you can kind of latch onto to find opportunities for jobs. Back when I was starting out, job openings weren't plentiful. You didn't know where to look. You know, there was a thing called a media line that you'd sign up for, and uh, you'd, 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 you'd call a number and listen if there was job openings specifically to what I wanted in sports, and there was never any jobs. You'd pay this fee for it. So in my case, I, I, you know, I got an opportunity to work at ESPN behind the scenes, and I thought that was going to be my path, really. I, I had a long uh, list of rejections for uh, opportunities for on-air work, and I was accepting the fact that I was going to be in production. And then one day I got an opportunity to interview for a job. I didn't get it. And, I, and uh, afterwards, I, I got the opportunity at the same place I didn't get, and uh, it kind of spurned from there. But I was accepting the fact that I might not get the opportunity to work on air. I got that opportunity and, and made the best of it, really. Jim, inspiring to hear that. Now, if you look back, do you think you would have been able to say that you would have seen yourself working as an anchor on ESPN today? Uh, Probably not. Probably not. I was just kind of rolling with it, really. You know, it was just, you take advantage of what is in front of you, and I really didn't know where it was going to turn. I, I worked in New Orleans for six years, and I enjoyed living in New Orleans. So, uh, and then I kind of decided I needed to get back to the Northeast. I went to a regional sports network and ultimately kind of navigated my way back to ESPN, where I started in production. So, uh, and to a large extent, uh, I, I never imagined it, but uh, it's been a good journey along the way, and I don't discount any of the smaller steps, uh, steps along the way to get there. So. Great to hear from Jim Baskell, anchor with ESPN. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's Jim. been a joy. Uh, pleasure. Pleasure. For Bethany Olson, I'm Tyson Geick here on the workshop on <laughs> QNN. Thanks for joining us.